Hi guys, it's Dave Farmer and welcome back to my series on Reaper. Today we're going to look at a simple session. I'm going to show you how to go from ground zero to exporting a, a file. I'm not going to go into too much detail. This is just going to be a sort of a step-by-step -step Reaper 101 or 100.5 or whatever you want to call it. Just a simple basic setup so P Pro Tools users, people that haven't used Reaper before, can just get up and running really fast. All right, so here we are in Reaper. We have a brand new empty session. If you don't see something that looks like this, go to File and select New Project tab. But now we're going to make a couple of new tracks. Just double click in this area. Uh, make three. Um, incidentally, go to, pro go to Project Settings here. Uh, project Settings there. Make sure your sample rate is set to be at least as low as your hardware allows. Like if you have a a box that runs 96k, don't set this to be 192. I won't go into detail about that, about why, just make sure you that's set like that. Now I'm going to go to um, SoundMiner and drag a couple of files in. Like that. You can drag in more than one at a time, let's do that. Now we'll just line those up. I don't care what these sound like. I'm just trying to show you how to how to do it. Uh, so now we're going to set up what would be the equivalent of an aux track in Pro Tools. So we can set up some plugins on one track instead of all these tracks separately. We're going to make this track a folder track. A couple of ways of doing that. You can click on this folder icon. That will make all of these three basically feeding this track. Or we can select the tracks we want and then drag them onto this track until you see a little indentation. Now you see this folder track is indented, is further left than the, the folders that make it up. So now all three of these tracks are feeding this track here. So now we're going to add some plugins on this aux track, or you know, it's really a folder track, but we're going to call it an aux track as well. Click on the effects icon. Now I'm going to add, let's see, let's search for, let's make Alloy 2, let's put Alloy 2 on there. And let's add another one. You can, I forgot to mention before, you can search here. You know, you also can search within subfolders like in this AU or this VST. But let's just go ahead and select all plugins. Let's put McDSP 6030 on here. And let's add another one. How about MicroShift from Sound Toys? Now you can turn these on and off at will here. You can add, I don't know how many you can add. I don't think there's a limit. Uh, so now you can see on this track down here, this is our folder track. You can see the plugins there. You can shift click on them to bypass them. So right now I've got Alloy 2 is on, 6030 is off, little micro shift is on. And the cool thing here is you can turn the whole rack off or toggle it off just by clicking this effects power button, which is also reflected here. So that turns the whole rack off, but if you turn it back on, it also maintains your bypass state. So you could have like 30 or 40 plugins in here, have only two or three of them on, bypass the whole rack like that. Okay, so that's that. Now let's set up a reverb track. We'll just double click to make a new track. So we're gonna call, we're gonna name this track Verb. And from this aux track, uh, folder track. I'm going to drag from the sends area. I'm just going to click and drag over to this reverb track and that sets up the reverb send for me automatically. You can see the send here inherits the name of the track it's sending to. So now let's click on the effects for the reverb track and let's call up Valhalla. Let's put uh, vintage verb on there. So now we, sh we have a... a reverb track. We can move this over here if you want. So now we have these tracks are sending through this folder track, which is where our plugins are. From that same aux, uh, folder track, we are sending to the reverb track, and that's all coming out of, our, out of our master output. So now let's just say we like the way this sounds, and we're going to export it. 
we right click and drag around here. And now we're going to have to set the time selection to be the area that we want to export. So I'm going to show you really fast how I set that. I'm going to find my shortcut, which is Command Home key, which is set time selection to items. And I can click Run here, and that sets your time selection to be the items you had selected. Now let's just say that we want this little to be a little bit longer because let's say we have a little, really long reverb tail. Let's pull that out longer. Okay, so now we're ready to export. Let's go to File, Render. That brings up this dialog box. We want to make sure that Master Mix is selected here under Render. And under Render Bounds, instead of doing Entire Project, let's choose Time Selection. That's going to only do this area that is selected. So now let's browse to a folder to export these files. I have a folder on my desktop called Reaper Basic Session. Let me just make a folder in here, call it Exports, choose that. That's my export folder there. Let's just do Test File. And now we're going to export the file with this file name. Now here's a cool feature I love about Reaper, is down here this little checkbox here, Save Copy of Project to Output File. What this does is save a, an exact copy of your session file right next to the audio file. So if, if you ever want to recall the session that created a file, you've got it right there. So that rendered the file offline. I pressed Render One File. That, that rendered the file offline. I can do Show in Finder. That shows the file and the session right next to it. I usually file these sessions somewhere away in, a, in another directory so I can recall them later, but that's a great thing. So that, in a nutshell, is how to get a session started and export a file. Hope that helped. See you next time.